I think all you need to know is that my narrator, Max, is 19. The object of his affections is Rose Clement. She's 21. She's the new assistant in his father's art gallery. Um, she also works as a curator in training at the Louvre. Um, Max's mother is a pianist, and she's also Polish. I saw little of Rose Clement even after she moved her two upholstered valises into the nurse's room on Valentine's Day of 1939. She did not allow Auguste to drive her to and from the Louvre. She did not pause to converse with me when I lingered in the gallery wearing a new shirt. Nor did she take her meals with our family as my father's other assistants had done. Sometimes this was for the best. At the dinner table, my parents argued. Father had been unsuccessful in keeping the newspapers from mother. She practiced less and less, but sat at the piano bench with the instrument's keys covered, listening to the Marconi Jubilee. Germany isn't Poland, my father said, slicing his asparagus. The sound of knife on porcelain made mother wince. There are no Cossacks in Berlin, he muttered. He's a crazy man when I hear him on the radio, mother said, pressing her temples. I can barely understand this German he is speaking. His mouth is so full with spittle. And he is an Austrian? No, but his accent is fake, Bavarian. That Goebbels they have on, he speaks perfectly, like Satan, but his articulation is perfection. He must be the envy of singers everywhere. My father reached across his dinner plate and laid a hand on hers. She snatched it away. You know nothing, she hissed. You've lived in such comfort here. Now you've got butter on your sleeve. The pitch of her voice dropped. I heard them arrive on horseback. We neither mentioned our absent guest nor the empty chair awaiting her, except on one occasion. Father reported that Mademoiselle Clément had inadvertently insulted the Princess Noailles by calling a certain Gauguin a good deal. The princess never spoke of money herself and bought paintings without inquiring about their price. She left all those details to her lawyer. Snobby old cow was what my father liked to call her. Still, I felt sorry for Rose. With father, it was so easy to make a mistake and not know it. You could sense his punishment later, but could not identify the crime. After second, the second week of Rose's apprenticeship, the empty fourth chair disappeared, and we returned to our regular table configuration. Thank God you stopped wearing that wretched cologne, Mother said to me after dinner. All my food tasted like musk. Pity the Poles, Father said. They lost you, their national treasure. Mother shook her head. No, pity the Poles, because they're trying to jerk Germany off with one hand and the Soviets with the other. This even shocked my father. We ate in silence. That winter, I gathered that Mademoiselle Clément took long, hot showers because I often heard water rushing in the pipes and, when I turned on my own spigot, found it cold. After dark, the lamp in her room made a yellow square in the courtyard until well into the night. I watched it for a shadow or a shape. My most prurient attempts to rig up an old motorcycle mirror on a string and dangle it like a fishing lure failed. Rose's private quarters remained so. I took to skulking in the hallway between the gallery and the street, hoping to catch her there. But I only frightened my father, who struck out at the shadowy figure in his corridor. Verboten, he shouted when he realized it was me. We had begun to speak German to each other as a nervous joke. I went back to tinkering with the motorcycle mirror. I started lifting barbells. For a month, mother talked only of the German refugee question and whether it was better for Jews to go to the Philippines or the Dominican Republic. Mrs. Roosevelt backed a move to accept 20,000 exiles and then christened the Yankee Air Clipper, America's first queen of the skies, with water from the seven seas. Pius XI was buried in his cloth of gold mitre. The discoverer of King Tut's tomb also died, though of natural causes, despite his curse. The Italians issued a call to arms of 300,000 men, all war babies, and those considered physically infirm the first time around. When I visited the draft board, I noticed that my card was filed with a crease at its corner. Father's laughter on the telephone was louder than ever. Some clients who decided to buy had their paintings shipped directly to houses in the country. I noticed Lucy hiding bags of sugar in the closet where I kept my tennis racket. To mother, father repeated, don't worry. She replied, I do. I wondered if they remembered that they had had a son at all. 
The heat clanked at the same pace it had my entire life, and yet that month seemed to pass more slowly than others. Rose's presence was fleeting. On one occasion, I passed by father's office as she sat at the typewriter in a green sweater with a hole at its elbow. Notes in a looping hand were torn in two in the garbage. I found her in the hallway bathroom once with a black tongue as a pen had burst when she licked its nib. I handed her a white towel and said, just ruin the cloth, and she looked grateful and closed the door on me as I stood there staring stupidly at her stained mouth. To the light in the courtyard, I sang along with my new American record. There's an oh such a hungry, yearning, burning inside of me, and I felt every word in the marrow of my bones. Eventually, August said, I hate this Cole Porter, and so I only played the album at a low volume and closed the window when doing so. When my curiosity about Rose overwhelmed my common sense, I decided to investigate her living quarters. I would find her diary and learn the secrets of her heart. Anything important in the house, not on canvas, was hidden in the kitchen. Searching in the spice cabinet behind the teapot Lucy kept filled with whiskey, I found a key attached to a paper disc on which was written nurse's room in my mother's hand. I planned my invasion for that afternoon. Thank you very much.